everyone in Turkey knows them by the name PKK and their bloody terror actions for decades. You might have heard of it as YPG and Syrian Democratic Forces in Syria or Kurdish freedom fighters in the coverage of international media. They formally called themselves the YPG, who the Turks would say equated to the PKK. You're dealing with a terrorist enemy of mine. Uh, how, you know, how, how can you do that ally? So we literally played back to them, hey, you got to change your brand. You know, what, what, what do you want to call yourself besides the YPG? And with about a day's notice, they declared that they were the Syrian Democratic Forces. Uh, I thought it was a stroke of brilliance to put democracy in there somewhere. However, neither some hostile US-led foreign policies nor what they're called or how they look can change the fact that they are responsible for the deaths of more than 40,000 people, including women and children in Turkey, by using the same terror tactics that Al-Qaeda or Daesh have used. That includes assassinations, suicide bombings, rocket and mortar attacks, and planting mines and IEDs in populated areas. But during the past few years, the group has adopted a new approach creating sophisticated underground terror tunnels to carry out brutal hit-and-run attacks that puts the lives of many civilians at risk. It's clear that the PKK, similar to Daesh, has been digging a complicated network of tunnels underneath many of the cities and villages in northern Syria. They're about 2 meters high and 1 meter wide. These pathways are essential to PKK strategy of targeting Turkish security forces inside and outside of the Turkish border. These tunnels also enable the terror group to move stealthily, strike quickly, escape capture, and transfer weapons to the terror network. Although it is difficult to estimate the exact number of these tunnels, it is known that they extend up to 113 kilometers along the Turkey-Syria border. Also, various reports and footage suggest that the majority of these tunnels open out onto houses, schools, hospitals, and places of worship across the region putting the lives of many civilians at risk. In conjunction with this, we came across a post on social media that accused the Turkish army of deliberately bombing civilian infrastructure in northern Syria under PKK control. Carefully designed to elicit strong negative feelings towards Turkey, the caption goes, I used to walk by this playground often in Tel Tamar. I would sometimes see children playing. Imagine growing up in a place where evacuation tunnels are needed under the place you play as a child. This is the reality the Turks have created for the children of northeastern Syria. The dramatic post got many views and comments severely bashing the Turkish army for the alleged crimes. By disseminating PKK propaganda on social media, the user partially fulfilled his objective, but he also unintentionally gave us two important pieces of information to work with. The camera angle and the where the photo was taken. So quick image reverse search confirmed that the photo is genuine and has never been used elsewhere before. Let's examine the photo now. We can fairly infer from the concrete structure of the tunnel in the image that it is the same as other tunnels used in terror attacks approximately 1.5 meter high and 1 meter wide. Next, listing the objects that can be used to pinpoint the location where the photo was taken. A building with pale blue roof resembling a warehouse. Another building silhouette right behind. Two antenna towers in the back. The position of trees. Side wall on the right steel fence that gives us the idea that the photo was taken from the corner of the field, land pile outside of the park. We can now begin sketching an estimated aerial viewpoint of the area based on the objects identified in the picture. It will give an idea of what kind of layout we're going to be looking for, but not knowing the size of the area and the fact that Syrian settlements are remarkably similar to one another it can be very misleading in our satellite search. Now we move on to the next step, confirming the location. According to the user, it's Tal Tamer, strategic town in western Al Hasaka Governorate in northeastern Syria. Although we can't solely rely on the information given, it is crucial to know where to begin. Searching for Tal Tamer on Google Images may give a clue. Detailed Tal Tamer photo we are looking for was published on the PKK propaganda channel in 2020. Building number one and the two antenna towers are clearly visible in the photo. 
Now that we know the photo was indeed taken in Tel Tamer, near a mosque, we can move on to the satellite search. After a quick research, we discovered that there is only one mosque in the town. Apparently, the location near Mizgafta Tal Tamer Mosque is where the photo was taken. But the fact that the slide appeared to be relatively new and the entire park was under construction raised suspicions. When was the playground built? As we predicted, the field, which was already in use as a park until 2018, was excavated in November 2019 and the slide was haphazardly installed in November 2019 by the PKK. So the question here is that if the goal is to ensure that the children can play safely on the playground, why would anyone ruin the already existing park and the nearby football field in line with building number one? PKK deliberately placed a playground right next to the tunnel's entrance in order to protect itself from the potential Turkish counter-terrorism operations by using the playground or possibly children as a shield. But it doesn't end there. A closer look at the satellite images reveals that this tunnel entrance connects to the main tunnel that runs beneath the nearby civilian hospital on the west and multiple civilian buildings on the east. Of course, this extends beyond Tel Tamer. We discovered dozens more tunnel entrances purposely open out onto civilian buildings in PKK-controlled cities on Turkey-Syria border. That includes busy streets, marketplaces, apartments, a university, a historical church, and even cemeteries. Let's quickly examine a few of them. A so-called university, located in southwest Kamishli, currently maintaining a partnership with Paris 8 University in France and California Institute of Integral Studies in San Francisco. Based on the posts from its official social media accounts, it is fair to conclude that the university functions more as an ideological training camp for the PKK than as an academic institution. To give you an idea, we were able to verify that one of the PKK propaganda videos was actually filmed on the campus by its students. Moreover, a tunnel entrance was dug in its backyard, which is claimed to be an agricultural garden. On March 2020, Two blue tents, which are typically used as a cover for tunnel excavation, are added in the same line. One in the university garden and the other on the vacant lot next to it. The soil around the tent turns into a debris as soon as the excavation begins. Although it covers an area of 10 square meters, it takes seven months to take down these tents before turning the area into agricultural space. Ten months later, another tunnel branch was dug next to these blue tents, linking the university to a huge network of terror tunnels that run beneath the city. In Ainalara, civilian structures were purposely built on a tunnel that extends for four kilometers beneath one of the busiest streets in the city. I also mentioned cemeteries previously because the PKK even used them in an attempt to conceal these tunnels or create connection points, knowing that cemeteries are the last place to be bombed. The list goes on and on, but I think you get the idea. This heinous act of terrorism is neither new nor unique to the PKK. No matter what name it goes by, YPG, SDF, Freedom Fighters, or the PKK, it continues to do exactly what a terror group does attempting to avoid retribution by hiding behind civilians and craving for civilian casualties to bolster position on the ground.